Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Here, I'll do my best to explain psychological concepts in a simple way that can be applied to everyday life. My goal is to help you better understand yourself and gain the tools to take control of your life, one step at a time. If you find this channel helpful, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Now, let's start today's topic. There are times when you may want to make changes. You could have watched many motivational videos, set goals and made plans, but still feel like nothing has changed. You might be wondering why change is so difficult and what is preventing you from making progress. This is a question that must be answered, as only by understanding the reasons can we find solutions. Firstly, we must acknowledge that change is a long-term cumulative process, consisting of countless small actions. If most of your actions can be directed towards your desired outcome, then change will naturally emerge gradually. For instance, if you aim to become more talkative, try engaging in conversation in 8 out of 10 situations where opportunities arise, rather than avoiding them. So, we can conclude that the difficulty of making changes ultimately depends on your ability to control your behavior. But, what exactly controls your behavior? The mysterious behind-the-scenes force is known as the self-schema. We all have our own ideas about ourselves, like I'm outgoing, I'm not good at anything, or I'm caring. These ideas make up a network of knowledge and experiences related to who we are. Psychologists call this network the self-schema. It is a person's general understanding of themselves based on their past experiences. Once formed, the self-schema influences your thoughts, behavior, and even your life at any time. If the human brain is compared to a computer, then the schema is the program installed in it. Whenever you encounter self-related information, this program automatically processes the information and determines your behavior. For instance, if a friend invites you to a party with strangers, your self-schema comes into play. If your self-schema suggests that you are not skilled at socializing, you are more likely to decline your friend's invitation. Of course, not being socially active is not a bad thing. However, if you want to make more friends and establish a broader network, it may be difficult to achieve your goals by always following the behavioral patterns dictated by your self-schema. The self-schema is a hidden force that silently dominates our behavior. To gain control over our behavior, we need to rewrite this program to serve our goals. Before thinking about how to rewrite it, we need to understand its three characteristics. I summarize it with three words, fast, selective, and stable. The human brain is naturally lazy. Schemas play an important role in helping us process information quickly and efficiently by acting as templates. When relevant information is encountered, it can be quickly handled based on this template, making the process simple and easy. Psychologists Brewer and Trayans conducted an interesting study. They invited people to stay in an office for a very short period, about 30 seconds. After the participants left, the researchers asked them what they had seen in the office. The majority of participants mentioned seeing books, even though there were no books in the office. This demonstrates that many people have a preconceived schema that an office should include books. Similarly, if your self-schema indicates that you are not good at public speaking, you may miss an opportunity to speak in front of others because you will quickly assume that you can't do it without analyzing the speech topic, potential content, audience, or preparation steps. However, if you gave it a try, you might actually do well. If your self-schema contains the belief that I am a worthless person, you will also tend to avoid challenges. For example, you may avoid pursuing people who are better than you, or not fight for promotion opportunities, even if you are highly qualified. Fast thinking can save brain power but can cause you to overlook reality and make erroneous decisions. Then, what does selective mean? When individuals process information from the outside world, they tend to more easily notice and remember information that is consistent with their self-schema. For instance, a person who struggles with socializing may be quick to interpret others' indifference at a party as unwelcoming toward him. When recalling the party, he is more likely to remember incidents such as, that person glanced at me unfriendly, I felt very unwelcome. This party may further confirm and deepen his self-schema that he is not good at socializing. Here is another example, when you go bowling for the first time and miss knocking down two pins, your friend next to you says, what a pity, you almost got them all. If in your self-schema, you see yourself as someone who is not good at sports, your focus will be on, what a pity. You will feel that not knocking down all the pins proves that you are not good at sports. However, if your self-schema is that you are good at sports, your focus will be on, almost got them all. You will think, wow, I almost succeeded on my first try. 
I am really skilled. The selectivity of the self schema allows it to continuously strengthen itself. The third characteristic of self schema is stability. A person's self schema is largely formed by their environment and experiences during childhood. At that time, we had limited cognitive and judgment abilities, so our self schema was easily influenced by external factors. For example, if our parents always criticized us for not doing something correctly, the self schema, I am stupid, may slowly form. As you have more and more similar experiences, the way you think about yourself becomes harder to change. If new information doesn't fit with the way you think about yourself, you might not even realize it or you might forget it really quickly. You might also try to change or ignore the new information instead of changing the way you think about yourself. Imagine you are a salesperson who doesn't meet a sales goal and then gets scolded by your boss. If you think you're not good enough, you may feel very sad because your boss's words confirm what you already believe about yourself. But if you think you're valuable, you won't easily change your mind, even if your boss says you're useless. Instead, you might think that the boss is silly for setting a goal that nobody could achieve. Now, you know how self-schema works. It controls how we think and act all the time, is hard to change, and makes itself stronger. Having a negative self-schema can be limiting, as it prevents you from exploring more possible ways of being. For example, you might believe that you're not smart enough to learn a new language, or that you're not outgoing enough to enjoy social occasions with strangers. You might even believe that you're not competent enough to take on challenging tasks. These beliefs can prevent you from reaching your full potential and living a fulfilling life. In fact, what you think of yourself may not necessarily be the real you. You may feel like you're not great at socializing, but when you have a topic you know well, you can talk to others. You might think you're not skilled enough and feel scared to try new things, but when you come across something you're passionate about, you'll naturally focus on it without realizing how difficult it might be. Have you ever noticed that even though the way we see ourselves affects how we act, our self-image doesn't show our whole true self? As long as we tear off the labels that the self-schema sticks to us and replace the negative schema with a more positive one, we can take advantage of its three characteristics to help us reach our goals and create a positive cycle of change. To change your negative self-schemas, there are three steps and example. Step 1, we call it description. Take out some paper and a pen. Write down 10 ways you see yourself, such as I'm the kind of person who is incapable, or energetic, or whatever. Cross out the positive ones and keep the negative descriptions. Step 2 is recall. Think back to something from your childhood that first made you feel the negative description you wrote in step 1. You can also recall recent events that have reinforced this description. Step 3 is reconstruction. Challenge the idea that these events prove you are that kind of person. Ask yourself, does this really mean I am like that? Could there be another way of looking at it? For example, in step 1 you wrote, I feel like I'm not capable. In step 2, you recalled a memory from when you were a child. Your mother had asked you to buy something and you lost the money. She called you stupid and said you couldn't even handle such a small task. When you reach step 3, remind yourself, I was just a kid, and it's normal to make mistakes. I've accomplished a lot, like making the winning shot in a basketball game or helping my friend plan his proposal. I'm not incapable, I'm capable of doing so much and handling challenges. This is a simple example to illustrate the three steps to change the self-schema. Of course, the actual situation will be much more complicated. You need to pay attention to identify the moments and scenes that cause your emotional reactions and further strengthen your negative schema, and then challenge it with critical thinking. Changing the way you think about yourself is not an easy task. As mentioned earlier, the process is very stable and stubborn, requiring constant practice. However, by persevering in this practice and continuously repeating the process, you can eventually establish a new schema. This new schema will guide your thoughts and behaviors toward a more positive path, making it easier to make changes and giving you control over your life. Okay, now take out a pen and paper and start the first step. If you found this video inspiring, please subscribe, like and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching and see you next time.